Welcome to the Map Window International GIS Users and Developers Conference. My name is Dan Ames. I'm a professor of civil engineering at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah in USA. I also have the pleasure of being the developer, initial founder, and project leader of the Map Window Project. So we're glad to have you here at this conference here in Debrecen, Hungary. And those of you who are here specifically because of Map Window, welcome. And those of you who are just learning about open source GIS, welcome as well. We're glad to have you. In this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about the history of the Map Window Project and show you some of the new things that have been released in the current MapWin ActiveX control and also some exciting things you have to look forward to in the next release of the MapWindow application. The Map Window application project consists of two major parts. There's the desktop application and the MapWin GIS ActiveX control. The ActiveX control is written in C++ primarily to make it run faster. The desktop application was originally written in Visual Basic, and that was to make it easy to design, build, and upgrade. Many people ask, why did we develop MapWindow GIS? I can tell you that originally we needed a programming environment that would allow us to embed GIS functionality in custom applications. So originally MapWindow was all about just writing your own GIS applications. And we wanted to provide a small tool, the MapWind GIS ActiveX control, that would enable that. In time, we discovered that there's also a need for a free or open source GIS wrapper application as well, and that became the MapWindow application. All right, let's get down to business and look at the MapWindow desktop application. This is the GUI of MapWindow version 4.8. As you can see, it's basically a fully functional GIS program. It's based on the MapWind GIS ActiveX components version 4.8 and was released in August of 2013. And this program covers all the basic features of GIS. In fact, we like to say that MapWindow desktop application does about 90% of what about 90% of GIS users need on a regular basis. It includes zooming and panning and a legend. There's a map area. In fact, you can load shape files, vector data, raster data. There are built-in tools in a toolbox for clipping, intersecting features, resampling grids, etc. MapWindow also has a fully functional table editor. This allows you to look at the attribute tables of shape files, and it contains a query builder and calculator for searching through your data. You can also update measurements, such as the area, perimeter, using a designated plugin inside the table editor. Like any other GIS, Map Window comes with a feature identifier that allows you to inspect the contents of any feature on the map. Colored maps can easily be created based on field values using the color symbology editor shown here. Features can be equipped with labels and charts. Even color gradients are supported for making nice symbologies and maps to illustrate your data. The print layout feature is available under the project menu. The print layout window is its own window that includes tools for building maps with a legend and a map and custom text and images. You can add a north arrow and a scale bar and set all the properties of each of the elements on your map using the properties window in the lower right hand side. Finally, and perhaps most usefully, Map Window comes with a powerful symbology manager. Changing symbologies only requires a few mouse clicks now and allows one to add things like custom charts based on data inside the features in your data set. A brief history of the Map Window project is as follows. In the year 2000, at Utah State University in Logan, Utah, USA, we were asked to create something called the TMDL Toolkit. This was a water quality analysis project that required a mapping component. We used the Esri Map Objects tool at that time. Unfortunately, this meant that all of our users had to pay a licensing fee to get the software. So we created our own mapping component. It was called the Map Win GIS ActiveX control. A simple white box you could drop in any Visual Basic or C-Sharp application and have mapping capabilities in your software. Originally, we started charging people for use of that ActiveX control. Later, in 2004, we got a contract with the United States Environmental Protection Agency to build a GIS-based watershed modeling system that would be completely free. The deal with the contract was, only if you make your software open source, they said. So, 
we said, why not? All of the map window source code was released as open source using the Mozilla public license, and we received the contract and began building something called Basins. Basins 4 is still available online from the US EPA. If you go to epa.gov and search for Basins 4, you'll find that software, and many people around the world still use it for water quality modeling applications. Over time, our Map Window users group began to grow large enough that we felt it was time to gather people together to have a brief conference or a workshop to learn about Map Window, the development activities, and opportunities for improvement. That first workshop or conference was the first international Map Window users and developers meeting, and it was held in Orlando, Florida in 2000. We had a large group of people. I think we had almost 90 folks come from around the world, and this included developers, and uh, users of Map Window, people that came with scientific presentations, uh, applications that they had developed in their companies. In 2011, we followed that conference with another one on the other side of the United States in San Diego, California, with another mixture of workshops and presentations on the state of the art in Map Window. At that time, we also introduced a new project called Dot Spatial, which is a developer library for .NET programmers that's a younger sister to Map Window. In 2012, I had the great opportunity to come to the Netherlands where me and my son helped put on with Paul Memes the third international Map Window Users and Developers Conference. Now it's 2014 and we're in Debrecen, Hungary and it's great to be here. In 2011, we moved a lot of the functionality of the mapwindow.org website over to CodePlex.com. CodePlex is an open source project hosting website produced by Microsoft. And of course, Microsoft is a late but enthusiastic member of the open source community, as demonstrated by their very functional CodePlex website. You can find MapWindow now at mapwindow4.codeplex.com. At that website, in the last few years, we've seen extensive downloads. In fact, 180,000 page views in 2012 and 2013 each, and about 140,000 downloads combined since we've moved the project to CodePlex. I personally love CodePlex.com. When we first started the Map Window project, there was no such thing as a website that had all of the capabilities we needed to host an open source project, big and complicated like Map Window. So we created MapWindow.org. We built our own issue tracking system. We used B uh, Bugzilla for a while. We added in a discussion forum from another package of PHP code. And we even created our own download manager and download counter. This was pretty effective for a number of years. But when CodePlex came along, we discovered that all of that functionality was already there, tightly integrated, and I didn't have to manage it. So when we moved Map Window 4 to CodePlex, a few months went by, and I thought, well, we need to put Map Window GIS ActiveX control there too. In fact, I remember where I was. I was sitting in a hotel in New Mexico. The conference that I'd just been at was over, and I sat down at my desk and thought, I better do something productive. How about move the ActiveX control to CodePlex? And I've never regretted doing that. It has its own home now. It's visible. People can find it that don't need the whole desktop application. And honestly, a lot of our users really are simply using the ActiveX control. Let me tell you about the downloads and page views for the ActiveX control since we put it there. Like Map Window 4, it receives about 180,000 page views per year and about 55,000 downloads since we put it there in 2011. The chart you're looking at now shows some of the demographics of Map Window users. Where are they coming from in the world? Well, we have this survey the first time you run Map Window application, it pops up a web browser and asks you a number of questions. That survey has been up since 2006 and has been filled in 13,000 times. This chart shows where the people are from who filled out that survey. You can see that most of them come from the United States, followed by Canada and a number of other countries. In fact, over 20 countries are currently logged as having filled out that survey. Hello and welcome. My name is Sieber Bos, Heide Consult, the Netherlands. Professor Ames has asked me to show you some actual projects of people all over the world who have applied MapWindow and or MapWinGIS in actual projects. Now I would like to start with one of our own projects, which is Meteobase.nl. Meteobase is an online archive that contains all historically observed precipitation and evaporation amounts in the Netherlands. Not only does it contain observed values from the ground stations of the Meteorological Institute, it also contains calibrated radar precipitation values. 
Most users of Meteobase.nl require their data in a grid file format, such as ASCII or NetCDF, and that is why we support these two file types. However, some users require their data as aggregated values by polygon. They wanted to have the average precipitation value in a polygon and apply that to their hydrological model. Implementing this feature on the server provided a bit of a challenge for us. Our first approach was to use the clip grid with polygon feature of the ActiveX control. So we would take the precipitation grid, we would take a shapefile of the user, and for each polygon in the shapefile we would clip the grid and then calculate the average value. But you can imagine having, say, 10 years of precipitation data on an hourly basis and about 1,000 polygons, that's going to take a while to process. So that's when we decided to hire an expert. We hired Sergei Lechinsky, one of the developers of the MapWinGIS ActiveX control. Sergei implemented for us a new feature called Grid Statistics by Polygon. As it turned out, in the end, this was about 100 times faster than our previous approach. Now let me continue by showing some other user cases from all over the world using MapWindow and or MapWinGIS. What we see here is a user case from Italy where MapWindow GIS was used to investigate landslide hazard. In this case the MapWind GIS components were used to process a digital elevation model. Here's another great example. MapWind GIS components have been used here to prepare model input data and display model results for the AGNPS model. This is a model that predicts the effect of agriculture on water quality. Another tool based on MapWindow and created by Waterbase, United Nations University, is MWSWOT. MWSWOT is a tool built around a successful and well-known simulation program called SWOT. It is a plugin in the map window desktop environment and it uses the latest TAUDEM executables. TAUDEM is a tool for automatic watershed delineation. From Utah State University comes this application called the Safety Software Suite. It is a set of free map window plugins for sign management and inventory, crash analysis, intersection analysis, road safety audits, ADA, ramp management and much more. Here we have an example of the Environmental Observation and Research Group where they applied floodplain mapping in the map window GIS environment. The HEC-RAS simulation model is used to calculate flooded areas and the map window GIS environment is used to prepare the model input and to display the results afterwards. In Belarus, this completely operational forest management application was created. It is being used to digitize harvesting units and print large-scale maps, but also to localize forest fires by triangulation from watchtowers. The application was built by Sergei Lechinsky, the main C++ developer of the MapWin GIS and also the author of the Symbology plugin written in C-Sharp. Turnion Corporations uses MapWin GIS in several projects where they build training applications for various branches of the US military. Sadly, we are not allowed to show screenshots of these applications. Brad Hester works at this American company. He's one of the C++ developers behind MapWin GIS. In 2014, we have a number of exciting advances in MapWindow and the MapWind GIS ActiveX control. Some of those improvements are currently available in version 4.9.1, while others will be released right after the conference in a new beta release of 4.9.2. For example, with the MapWind GIS ActiveX control, we've streamlined the build process. We used to embed GDAL, GEOS, and Proj4 directly into the MapWind ActiveX control, but it made for that control to be quite large and difficult to keep maintained. So now we take those components pre-compiled from GISinternals.com. It keeps things a little bit easier to be updated to the latest versions of the components. Over time, a number of plugins have been written in C Sharp and Visual Basic and added to the project. As we've found that some of these plugins are pretty fundamental to the GIS functionality at the core, we've migrated those codes from C Sharp down into the ActiveX control. So you'll find that the MapWin GIS 4.9 ActiveX control has additional functions that weren't there in 4.8 and even more that will be released shortly in 4.9.2. Soon we're going to rewrite the entire desktop application in C Sharp as a new wrapper for the MapWindow 
ActiveX control, and it'll expose all of the new functionality of the MapWin ActiveX control. And it'll be a much more stable and uh, usable desktop application built on this framework. With the 4.9 version release of MapWin GIS ActiveX control, we've updated all of the supporting libraries to the latest versions. These include GIS internals for support for GDAL, Proj4, and GIOS. It also includes our spatial library, upgraded to the latest version, and Mr. SID support and JPEG 2000 support, all upgraded to the latest available libraries for these tools. The MapWin GIS ActiveX Control version 4.9 included 68 new functions that were added. These were mostly related to tiles and projections. We also implemented several new GDAL methods, such as adding overviews, rasterizing, and polygonizing. Also, some new spatial analytic methods were added, such as grid statistics for shape files, uh, getting the closest vertex, getting related shapes, and clipping grids with polygons. We also added the capability to join external data using a table.join and support for multi-band grid files. Here we see tiling support in version 4.9. Several tiling providers such as OpenStreetMap, Google, and Bing are supported. And there's a native zoom bar built into the ActiveX control, much like you might see in a Google Maps. With the release of version 4.9.1 of the ActiveX control, we have better efficient support for handling grids, a new file manager class, a measuring tool, a number of additional add-ins. In fact, 146 new functions were added, such as finding the closest points on a shape or importing from the well-known text format into a shapefile. Also, shapefile validation, ensuring that your shapefile is fully supported is all also built into the ActiveX control. A measuring tool built into the MapWin GIS ActiveX control supports in-control measurement of paths and areas. It also supports snapping to features, and you can activate the measuring component by simply clicking the M hotkey on the keyboard. With the release of version 4.9.2 of the ActiveX control, even more functions will be added. Now that version of the ActiveX control isn't available just yet, but we've put in 24 new functions, including a new zoom bar, enhanced handling of online tiles. The ActiveX control now has improved projection support. On-the-fly reprojection within the component supports layers and tiles. We check for mismatched projections, get the EPSG codes, and use the latest EPSG database. Grid support has been improved in the latest version of the MapWin GIS ActiveX control. For example, we use an optimized proxy file for GeoTIFFs. Proxy file is created on the fly, giving a much more efficient and fast support for this common file format. Pyramids or overview files are also created and used now for more efficient zooming, panning, and viewing of raster data. Animated zooming and panning also makes the map using experience more smooth. Another new feature in the MapWin GIS ActiveX control is an improved polygon coloring scheme. Using this method, no two polygons that are adjacent will share the same color. This was a feature one of the users of the MapWin GIS ActiveX control sought, and they didn't have the ability to program that, so they funded a developer inside the community who wrote that additional code, and now we have the capability added for everybody's use. When you find things that you find are missing from the MapWin GIS ActiveX control or the desktop application, this is a way that you can get those capabilities added in and contribute back to the open source community. Say you need to have some custom functionality built as a plugin for MapWindow. You have a couple of options available. One, of course, and we would encourage this, is to learn how to write the code yourself and look at some of the examples that are already on the MapWindow website. Alternatively, you'll find there are a number of developers with experience creating MapWindow plugins who would be happy to work with you. You can find those developers by posting your comments or questions to mapwindow4.codeplex.com. As a hydrologist and water resources engineer at heart, one of the tools I really like in MapWindow is the TAUDEM Automatic Watershed Delineation Tool. Not all of you will use it, but those of you who need it will find it very useful. The way TAUDEM works is you load a digital elevation map, or a DEM, raster. You identify a point on the map where you want to show where all of the water flows out of the watershed. And then you press go and let TAUDEM do the work. 
Tautem will identify all of the pits in your grid, fill the water levels, make a, a hydrologically smooth surface, and then we'll identify all of the flow paths that come to your outlet, ultimately defining the watershed boundaries and sub-basins in a drainage area. A number of sub-menus exist in the Tautem plugin to allow you to do each one of these steps, plus a, no a number of other hydrologic analysis steps, one at a time as needed. The Taudem plugin in MapWindow is based on Taudem version 5, which is a complete redesign of this watershed delineation and hydrologic data analysis toolkit by David Tarbotten at Utah State University. Taudem 5 uses multi-core processing and the MPI parallel processing interface, allowing these uh, tools in hydrologic data analysis to run on very large data sets very fast. We've kept Taudem in MapWindow all through these years because of the history of using MapWindow for watershed analysis in basins for the SWAT MapWindow interface and other hydrologic applications. We've shared with you a lot of the new advances in the MapWind GIS ActiveX Control version 4.9.2. You might be wondering what's coming in the desktop application. Let's talk about that for a moment. The initial version of the desktop application was version 1 and then 2 and 3 as you might imagine. Then in 2004 we released version 4. It's taken us a while to get past version 4. We tried a couple of times with different additional versions and didn't quite get there. Right now, we're enthusiastically working on what will officially be known as MapWindow Desktop Application Version 5. MapWindow 5 will have a number of new and exciting features. It will also be re-architected from the ground up. The user interface is based on user interface controls donated by SyncFusion. SyncFusion is known for creating great user controls and user interfaces. And by giving us a free license to use SyncFusion tools, we'll have a very modern, functional, and nice looking desktop application. You will find in the new map window desktop application a number of new functions and capabilities. You'll also find us working towards building a model builder. And the model builder will allow one to use a diagram to string together tools to perform geoprocessing scripts or tasks. You see here the Map Window 5 screen has built-in tiling and support for basic legend control right away. The Sync Fusion's data grid is a cell-oriented display engine for tabular data. It allows for loading and exporting large amounts of data. No longer will Map Window reload the attribute table when selecting another vector layer. Rather, each layer will have its own loosely coupled table editor, which makes it easier and faster to work with attribute data. Of course, tools to add or remove columns and a calculator will also be provided. Additional GUI features in the Map Window 5 will likely include a skin manager, a splash screen, a script editor, and ribbon style menu. We will also provide exporting capabilities for Word, Excel, or PDF from produced maps in Map Window. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation, a little about the history of the Map Window project, some of the things we're doing now, recently released capabilities and functions of the ActiveX control and desktop application, and where it's going in the immediate future. I want to take a moment and thank you for being a part of this project. Whether you've just downloaded the software and tried it, whether you've solved a problem, whether you've uploaded a bug, or provided some documentation, all of these things help an open source project succeed. And without people like you, both using, developing, contributing to in one way or another, either just as a user or somebody that's helping other people use the software, without people like you, the software wouldn't succeed. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank Paul Memes. He's done a fantastic job of organizing this meeting and our last meeting in the Netherlands, and he's taken a real leadership position in helping move the Map Window project forward. Well, it's been a pleasure sharing this information with you. I hope you have a wonderful conference here in Debrecen, and I look forward to seeing you all someday in the future. Thanks. <laughs>